Hey, is your retirement income higher than the average in America? So I guess this is for you retirees out there or your parents if you're not retired. Because a lot of the people that follow me don't really plan on retiring. And I get it. A lot of people want to retire because they have really difficult jobs. They don't feel engaged in it. They don't feel enough purpose. They got trapped in the system of getting a student loan, rushing to a job, not loving what it is, getting stuck in that corporate ladder or whatever it might be. Or maybe they, you know, what, there's a number of reasons. Often when we trade time for money, because that's what we got to do to provide, it becomes suffocating, frustrating, difficult. And so I get why retirement seems like a really good notion. Hopefully over time through technology and AI, we can remove some of the jobs that nobody really wants to do that might be overly redundant. Like think about the days where people worked in assembly lines. I mean, that was monotonous work. It wasn't enjoyable, especially when they're working seven days a week. I would want to retire from that. You know, think about other jobs that, you know, someone's like uh, reviewed my book once and said, well, if people follow Garrett's advice and do what they want, who would be a garbage man? Well, maybe kids. Maybe we start there. Or maybe there are people that really enjoy that job. Who are we to judge? Or maybe there's technology that can start to make that much more efficient or improve that so that we can do the things that we do best. Find the inner artists that we have. Create more value doing things that we love that help serve others. Now, it doesn't mean we all get to do what we love all the time. There's difficulty in creating a business if you go the business route or finding the right organization that fits your culture of what you would want to live into or finding enough vision that it's inspiring to you and engaged work that you like, like most of the time. I think we've just kind of succumbed to, I don't know, I guess I just set my money aside and hope for the best and I just got to drudge through this so that one day, someday I can retire to live the life I love while I've been doing things that I hate. I get it. That's the narrative. And a lot of people are like, oh yeah, you love what you do. You're an entrepreneur. Yeah. Or you, you're, you know, you just were lucky and, and maybe that's part of it. But what if it was being intentional? What if it was creating a life that we didn't want to retire from starting to design a life that where the win is in the work because it's the work that's fulfilling to us and that we really invest in ourselves and our skill set. This whole notion of the question is your retirement income higher than the average in America. First, people retire and they become dependent upon a market they don't control on interest rates that change all the time on taxes that fluctuate. All these things become fearful. And when we retire from purpose and value creation, maybe not having enough money means we don't get to spend time with the relationships and doing the things that we want and not feeling in control of our money, our relationships, or our purpose can be detrimental to our overall longevity. All right, so let's see what this article has to say. Wondering how your retirement savings stack up to others Americans nest egg? Well, let's just put people in a comparison so they can feel bad about themselves. Comparison is a thief of joy. It's about collaboration. It's about value creation. It's about service. It's about looking at our own life and coming from the place inside of us that says, who are you? What do you want to do? Who do you want to be? Like being the author of your life, it says, or whether your income in your post-work years will be enough to keep you afloat. If you wonder that, it's normal to be curious about the average retirement income in the U.S. Just remember that you need enough in your retiree days to meet your own needs. Well, like, let's talk about this. Want versus need. Like, need isn't really inspiring. Like, what if you only need to eat 500 calories, but you're just hungry all the time? Or you just need to eat anything, not something that's enjoyable. Or you just, you know need to live in a cardboard box, but that's not the home that you want to live in. Or you don't need to have a car, but you'll, you could just walk. Like need is abusive to say here. Need in order to what? Wants and desires and fulfillment. What about that? Because needs, who determines that? What someone needs, right? So I think it's a personal choice here, but need is something more for survival where wants something that's more fulfilling. It says, Average Social Security retirement income. We all know that saving for retirement is a wise course of action. Okay, they just assume. Well, what if economic independence is much more powerful than retirement? Creating enough assets to create cash flow rather than just contributing to a plan you know nothing about and becoming financially independent before you retire. Maybe that's more wise than just setting money aside. Now it says... Why we have Social Security, a form of forced savings that diverts income into our working years to our golden years. Forced savings. So thank you, big brother, for forcing savings that, by the way, the government fully spends every dollar by borrowing every dollar out of Social Security. And what happens when, as people live longer but sicker, Social Security becomes bankrupt because it's already bankrupt because we're borrowing it. And we don't quite have the taxes since we're going $31.4 trillion in debt. So forced savings? Maybe I'm better at saving than the government. 
Do we think the government's really responsible and great with money? Is that what most people believe? So it says Social Security benefits were never designed to be an American's sole source of retirement income, though. That's why saving for retirement, either through an employer-sponsored plan or your own, is so important. Look, retirement was a notion of the industrial age, where people died shortly after 62, where people worked terrible, worked hard jobs, where they risked their life. What if you create a job that you enjoy again? Like, some people think that's not possible, but I, I love to write, and I write. I mostly love to do these videos, and I do these videos. I really enjoy speaking, but I could have done what I started was cleaning cars. I car detailed. I had a car detailing business when I was 15, 16, 17, 18. You know, like, I could have stayed with that. That was not the funnest work. I didn't really enjoy it. And I could have said, well, this I'm a small town. This is what you do. Or I could have followed in my great-grandfather, grandfathers, and dad's steps and been a coal miner, that's some tough work. So I get it. Like, what if we redefine our lives and enjoy it along the way and get our financial house in order, which is about cash flow, just not accumulating into things we know nothing about, stop relying on Social Security. If it's there, it's a bonus, and really focus on financial independence. So it's saying Social Security makes about a third of the income for the elderly. Um, it says, you know, the average monthly retirement is $1,827 from Social Security. Um, it could be smaller if you don't have 35 years of work. You know, uh, if you wait till full retirement age or age 70, you get more benefits than if you start at age 62, but you miss out on eight years of income. So what was that worth, right? There's also a gender gap. Uh, women, because they tend to earn less and work for fewer years, draw smaller Social Security checks than men. So this is a lot about Social Security. All right, so we kind of know what the average is there. Let's see what else the story has in mind. Uh, Social Security, Social Security, Social Security. Now what? Average retirement incomes from savings. You may have heard about the impending retirement income shortfall in the U.S., uh, like crisis and disaster, hearing those words. Um, there's plenty of articles that lament on the lack of retirement savings. So this says, according to the National Institute on Retirement Security, almost 40 million households have no retirement savings at all. I'm one of those, but I'm financially independent. I don't have any money in an IRA or a 401k, but I do have a lot of cash value inside of insurance. I have a couple pieces of real estate, of which one of us completely paid off. Um, I also have uh, intellectual property that I still get money because when people buy my books and things, that just keeps coming in recurring revenue. And I have uh, intellectual property and licensing deals that bring in income. So uh, that's, I would show as one of those 40 million, but probably better off than what they're talking about here. So it says that the current retirement savings deficit is 3.8 trillion. What does it mean? It means that we have bad retirement planning. The notion of invest early, often, and always, set it and forget it, dollar cost average, you're in it for the long haul, high risk equals high return. These are all faulty notions. Setting money aside with neglecting cash flow, not knowing whether it's performing, putting your money in and seeing the account go up, but the account's not going up from the performance, having volatility in the market in times like 2000 to 2002, 2008 to 2010, or what we saw in 2020 and 2020, the end of 2022, right? So like, this is the thing. Yeah, the deficit might be faulty reporting. Or, I mean, faulty, not reporting, faulty processes, faulty systems, faulty ideas, faulty model, and being too risky. It says Fidelity reports the average balance of IRA was $101,000. Okay, $101,000, even if someone's making minimum wage, $101,000, if it's kicking off 5 6 7% with a fixed income thing, that's only five to $8,000 a year taxable if it's coming from something that's not a Roth IRA. So that's a problem. So they're telling you to set up your life for retirement and stop enjoying life along the way. What if you're funding retirement plans, but you have high interest rate loans that are costing you more than your retirement plans earning, or you don't have enough liquidity and savings in an emergency fund or peace of mind fund, as I call it, so that if something happens with a health or a family member or a career change, you're not going into credit card debt or declaring bankruptcy and having to start over. See, retirement plans are a problem because it's an investment plan, but save money first, deliberately invest second. Learn how to keep more of what you make by plugging your financial leaks. Grab the quick tips guide. The quick tips guide are like all these quick ways that you can put money in your pocket so you're not just taking risk. So you can get further than just setting your money in a retirement plan and hoping for the best. So it's saying drawing down retirement income. According to Gallup, Gallup the average retirement age is now 62. That's, if you live to life expectancy, that's well over 20 years. That's a long time to be retired. Maybe you saved for 20 years, and now you're going to save 10% and then try to live off that, you know, 
amount for 20 years, that could be a problem. What if you don't feel well? What if you have other surprises? So it's saying you can run out of money. And it says the typical recommendation is a retiree follow 4% annual draw rate. If you take more than 4%, it says it could it destroy the account. So think about this. 100 grand at 4%, that's $4,000 a year. That's not helping people enough. Focus on cash flow. Become economically independent. Follow the methodologies of other videos I have and the resources. Read the books. Make sure you take back control of your financial future, right? Tax deferred accounts. Well, they grow, but then you have to take uh, an amount at a certain point. So the bottom line is, Social Security isn't going to cut it. Tips on retirement, they're just saying, go talk to a financial advisor. But what if the problem is, the financial advisor is putting you in retirement plans before building liquidity, before plugging your financial leaks, before investing in yourself, before creating cash flow, and that actually is slowing you down and harming you. If this is concerning to you, don't worry. I got your back. There's more videos where this came from. And if I seem angry, I get a little frustrated about some of these articles. I want to help you discern truth from falsehood. And again, take back control of your financial future. Hey, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. And if you're enjoying these videos, well, there's good news. More where that came from. So go ahead and click through and watch the next video now.